they should just tell you to just go to the and 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 just go now today, I don't know if you caught in the at the end of the song, there was a baptism, and that was uh, Jesus being baptized. So today, we're going to talk about John baptizes Jesus, and the memory verse is, "He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved." Mark sixteen sixteen, and the scriptures which you could go back to your Bible and read are from Matthew three, Mark one. And Luke 3, 1 through 22. And the aim of this story today is to teach us that we need to tell others about Jesus. So that's the aim of our story today. Now, I don't know if you remember or not the story, but we told about this older couple who was Zachariah and Elizabeth. And this older couple... Uh, God appeared to Zechariah. He's a priest in the temple. And God appeared to Zechariah and told him that their prayers had been answered. Now, what was the number one prayer? Elizabeth, his wife, was not able to have children. And so she had prayed for many, many, many years to have a child. And she could not have a child. So she had forgot. She did quit praying. And she, she just had kind of given up. But then Zachariah, her husband, was in the temple, and it was his turn to offer the incense. So while he was in the temple, the angel Gabriel came to him and told him that your prayers have been answered. Your wife will have a son, will have a baby. And so you are to call this baby John. So John, here, here uh, he, he, uh, Zachariah goes home and tells his wife, and sure enough, they have a baby. And, um, but anyway, Jesus was John's cousin. Remember with the story about Mary? Mary was a young girl, and she had a baby. So John was a little bit older than Jesus. So anyway, um, they had never seen each other. Now, they were... When the mothers were expecting the babies, they saw each other because Mary went to see her cousin Elizabeth because she heard that Elizabeth was going to have a baby too. So she went to see it. Of course, the, the children had never seen each other. But anyway, they were cousins. Okay, John's parents taught him about God. And here, here we see John. Now, the picture of John that I have in my mind it's a picture with camel hair and, you know, just a real rugged looking person. But this is going to, we're going to pretend this is John on the flannel graph. And um, so anyway, John's parents taught him all about Jesus and the coming of the Messiah. And that, that the angel told him that he was going to grow up to be very, very special. And he was to tell people about the Messiah. So anyway, um, they, they taught John to seek God with all his heart and to pray. And so John, when he was older, he went out to the desert to be alone. And this is, where, this is the desert. So John went out to be alone. He wasn't alone very long, was he? <laughs> so anyway, the people came to hear him out in the desert. And he was out there to be alone and to pray and to uh, seek God with all of his heart. He was a very, he had grown up as a child to love God. And so, but here the people hear about this man out in the desert, and here he is. Um, one day he began to preach, and so he says, the Messiah is coming. Now that was his cousin, because uh, the angel Gabriel had told Mary that she would give birth to baby Jesus. And so even though he had not seen uh, Jesus, he was so excited because he knew the story. And the, even the Old Testament is filled with stories about Jesus and the Messiah. So anyway, John was out in the desert 
spending time alone. And so um, he began to preach, the Messiah is coming. And John's task was to tell everybody to uh, help them prepare to listen to the Messiah when he did come. And so one day, John began to preach. The time is now, he said. The time is now, he told the people. And the people flocked to the desert to hear John preach. And said, the coming of the Savior is near. He spoke with power and authority. And he didn't, it didn't, he spoke so plainly. It didn't matter to him that the rich and the powerful people were there listening. All the powerful people there in government and everybody came out to listen to this, you might say, a wild man out in the desert preaching, you know, so about the coming Messiah. So anyway, uh, John's teaching reached a lot of people. And his message was very simple and very direct. The people must repent. He was telling people, the people must repent of their sins. And many of these people realized that God was not happy with them sinning the way they were. So anyway, he, um, they were there, and John realized that they were deeply sorry and so about the way they were living. And John led them down to the Jordan River. Now remember the Jordan River. Harold and I went to the Jordan River. And we were baptized in the Jordan River, the same place Jesus walked in, the same place in the water. We were baptized in the Jordan River. So now we're going to go down to the Jordan River. Right there's a pretty powerful person in the crowd, don't you think? Right there you can see everybody was listening. We're going to use this background for the Jordan River, but we're going to make it smaller because the Jordan River was not a big, massive place like this. Now, this is more like what the Jordan River looks like now, except, um, let's see.
Now, we would call these palm trees. I don't know what they called them back in the day. But to me, they look like palm trees. Somebody has to give me that. Okay, so we see John led the people who were sorry for their sins. He led the people down to the Jordan River to be baptized. And so um, they were deeply sorry for their sins. So when he led them down there to be baptized, he gently put them under the water, and then he raised them up again. And this signified that they were sorry for their sins and that they're they were sorry for all the wrongs that they were done, and their sins were being washed away okay, with the baptism. Okay? John's teaching was practical and down to earth. He taught people to care for one another, and he said if anyone has two coats, and you see somebody with one coat, then give them one of your coats. So he taught people to love one another. And one day, Jesus traveled. Jesus traveled down to the Jordan River to see John. Now, John and Jesus had never seen each other. But John recognized Jesus. And Jesus said, would you please baptize me? And John said, why should I, why should I baptize you, Jesus? You have never done anything wrong. And Jesus said, I want you to baptize me because I want everyone to have an example of what baptism is all about. So he said, he must, Jesus said, I must be baptized to provide an example for people. So anyway, John obeyed Jesus and they went into the water. You come on here when you get a chance. My my wrist is getting more rough as I want it to. Praise God. Now here was John. He had spent all this time telling everybody about the Messiah, and here was the Messiah asking that he baptize him. And so anyway, John decides. Yes, he will baptize Jesus. But when Jesus raised up, when John raised Jesus up out of the water, something marvelous happened. Do you know what that was? No. Okay, something marvelous happened. And what happened was that a dove came down and landed on Jesus' shoulder. There was a dove. And who sent that dove? God sent that dove. And suddenly, no. they heard a voice. They heard a voice from heaven. And he said, this earth. is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. So that was God's voice. God had said it himself. And this gave Jesus the courage. Jesus was to face many, many hardships along the way. And you probably know what they are. We'll be talking about them later on. But Jesus was to face many hardships. But he heard his father, he heard his heavenly father say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So this gave John courage, gave Jesus courage to face all the things that he was going to face later on. 
And then John heard it. All the people heard Jesus or God speak about his son. So all the people heard it. And so at another time, uh, Jesus was walking along the path, probably back in the desert. After they got out of the water. And he was walking along the path. And John saw him coming down. And you know what John said? Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So John saw Jesus again, and he called him the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So anyway, um, this is exactly what God wants us to say today. He wants us to tell people about Jesus. And you know what? One, one scripture that I've always uh, started with is for John 3.16. For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16. And who, did, who is the whosoever in that? That means me and you. Do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, how much God loves you? He loves you so much that he sent his son into the world. And his name was Jesus. So, uh, why not think about somebody today that you can think about and you can just pray and pray for that person. You probably all know someone that maybe is not living the way God is pleased with. So what can you do? You can pray for that person. Just like uh, John went along in the uh, desert to spend time with God in prayer. And you all have time to spend in prayer to pray for somebody that you love and you know. And, you know, God may not answer right away, but how long did it take for him to, you know, send the son to Elizabeth? A long time. So don't get discouraged and don't give up on your loved ones. So share Jesus with people you know and also pray. Pray for the people you know. So anyway, that's our story for today. And we'll have a new story next week. Now, I won't tell you. It'll be a surprise. I won't tell you what the story is, but just remember, God loves you, and we love you, and you are loved, so you have a great day.